Hey everybody, welcome to Art of the City TV. I'm Ruth Ann, your host, the owner of Exclusive Collections, and I've been an art dealer for 30 years now. And it's been my great pleasure to bring great artists to mainly Facebook Live, but now we're working on Instagram Live. So today I have an amazing artist coming on. He is a one of probably the greatest talents when it comes to many, many mediums. He's a street artist, he does graffiti, he also does clothing design. He's really been kind of one of those artists that was early in the 80s and 90s was a trendsetter for street artists from all around the world. And his name is Apex. I have one of his works behind me. We had this incredible graffiti show in San Diego a few years back. And I had the distinct pleasure of meeting him along with some other graffiti artists. It was really a fantastic show. So I'm hoping that we're and um, as soon as we do, we'll be able to talk a little bit about how things are going in his world. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to just let you folks know that if you want to share this page, just go ahead and hit that. And um, I'm excited to have him. Are you online there, my friend? Hello, hello. How are you? I'm well. How are you? Good. Does this, uh, does this remind you of anything? Oh, yeah. That was a fun day. That was a really, really great day. And I wish that I had a way on Instagram to show the video because it was pretty amazing just what you did live with a blank, blank canvas here. Yeah. So how have you been? You know, share with um, you know, our viewers what's been going on with you since um, probably the last, maybe, what has it been? Five, at least six or seven years. What have you been up to? Um, a little bit of everything, actually. <laughs> All right. I, uh, let me rotate this a little bit better. There we go. Um, just continuing to build my uh, practice and sharing art with the world uh, is what I've been up to and will continue to do and finding different ways that I can uh, do that, you know, so, um, a lot of commission pieces, uh, travel, traveling the world, doing pieces, um, interior design work, uh, public art, a little bit of everything. I know the one thing I, I know when I came to San Francisco and went into your studio is I was blown away by how many things you have your hands in as far as an artist. I mean, you just really have all kinds of things always going on. Yeah, if the creative spirit is with me and something gets downloaded, I like to uh, experiment and understand what it is because it all feeds itself and comes back together, you know? And then that way, my vision, my passion can then reach more a wider audience, more people. Amen. Well, a lot of folks here have been following you. I know you've got a huge following on Instagram, but how did this all start for you? Can you give us a little bit of a background of, you know, how you really became passionate about art and where you grew up. Just give us a little snapshot of who you are. Uh, born and raised in San Francisco and um, just always looking out the window, you know, as a kid. So that's the very first thing I saw was public art of all kinds. And then it was writing from the writing culture and in the early eighties and just seeing that as a kid before I knew what a museum was, before I knew what a gallery was, like seeing that first was something that I keep with me. And that's a large part of why I like to still paint in the public for the general public, as well as for the kids who are just looking out the window, you know, as their parents are going from point A to point B. I think that's really important to introduce at a young age, uh, art, culture to kids. And a lot of times parents can't afford it or they, they, it's just not allowed for their, you know, in their environment. So to be able to have that in a public space or something that's really important to me. And that's really how I started. I saw that first and by seeing that first, it, uh, it caught my attention and then I never let go. That's awesome. Well, you know, I was also born in San Francisco. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. I'm a little older than you, I think, but, uh, um, yeah, I, and I think one of the things that the city has to bring is that 
you know, from the 60s, it was really the cultural hotspot. You know, this is where the whole hippie movement started, right. the, game, the music, the whole scene. And it's always been a place where there's been a diversity of folks there. So I didn't get the fortune like you did to grow up there, but I went to my grandparents for many, many years and was exposed to the arts. So that's so cool. So how did you decide, okay, I'm going to be an artist? Oh, uh, I did. Well, that's, that's the two parts to that. One, it was decided for me that I'm going to be an artist. I was, that's just what I was ever since like third grade. I was always doing some kind of art and then, um, going to college for, uh, graphic design and architecture. I was trying to fit into the society roles of, you know, whatever job. And it wasn't until I was photo assisting for like six years that in that process, I was like, you know, I got to do what I have to do. And I pivoted, saved up money, got an art studio, and any free time I had, even if I didn't know what I was doing, I was just sitting in the art studio, which was something completely new for me from painting on the street to being indoors and presenting a body of work. And uh, that was early 2000s, so maybe like oh four or five somewhere in there okay that i decided like okay i'm gonna yeah oh four i think like i'm gonna pursue an art career and it wasn't even like thought out like that much to be honest it was just straight up like this is what i have to do this is what i want to do okay here goes these you know structures i studio create work no outline no guidelines nothing like today no business plan no business <laughs> plan no no uh instagram no nothing it was just really forging going out there and finding it yourself and discovering yourself as you find it i bet that was a bit of a struggle financially uh yeah financially it was a struggle but i've always been like really uh as you know now terminology and entrepreneur um so i always figured out ways to be frugal and how to save my money and how to make money so that I can like do my passion. It was always like that over there. I was doing that so that I can do my art. Is there any uh, piece that you've done public pieces? I've seen a lot of your work, but is there any particular piece that you feel like, man, I really, I really raised the bar here that you feel really proud of? Um, th through the eras, there's always, something that like either a I get enough time to actually get to it so that I can just really concentrate on it and kind of let everything else melt away so over the years there's been numerous ones that have been markers um, right. I won't narrow one out because they're they're just markers on my path you know sure. that I to continue I'm looking forward to like the next one um, Okay, fine. So there's one in South of Market, and it was me, Vulcan, and we, and Chez painted with us, and me and Vulcan painted with 533 colors. And, oh. and we wanted to submit it to the Guinness Book of World Records. We found out after that they had to participate the whole process, and because we had documented everything. But to our knowledge, that is the uh, most colorful pieces ever created with 533 individual colors of spray paint. Um, that is so cool. So that was a marker. That was a, a real push of understanding color and layering and how to appreciate all those various shades and tones. That's awesome. So in the last few months, um, ha have you been affected by this COVID crisis or how have you felt about it as an artist? Um, of, of course, been affected by, uh, where, you know, everything got shut down, everything slowed down to a, a snail's pace, if at all moving. Uh, I had a commission piece just when it started. So I was okay. able to, and the, the, CEO of that company was really cool. And I just looked at him and said, Hey, look, man, everything shut down. Can I, this is something that would take me like 10, 12 days to do. Can I just take the month? 
so the first month of it, I was just working on this. Nobody else was around. And I was just working on this private piece on the outdoor courtyard. So that was great just to kind of clear my mind and just to watch everything happen around me. And then since then, uh, you know, I've done a couple little projects here and there, like free ones or, you know, minimum work just to keep active. And then as an artist, I'm always going forward. I'm always looking forward, which means I leave a lot of stuff behind that I should pick up office work, uh, email, organization, all that in-house home stuff. So then I turned around and after about a week of just kind of being like, whatever, I started doing that work and cleaning that up and getting things together, updating the website I'm in the process of right now, all that kind of stuff that I usually I'm like, yeah, whatever. That's what I'm taking stuff. care of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So it's, it's actually been um, a good thing. And also it's a good thing that I am frugal because that allowed for me like not to really worry about finances to have like a little cushion but um overall it's a, a stagnation of energy and movement in the world that i feed off of that i enjoy i like seeing that the world turn and and to like jump into it so i'm you know i think like a lot of people you know across many fields uh i'm ready for it to safely reopen and started moving again so that we can all participate, you know, that, that actual social connectivity. Yeah, I think it's been interesting, the artists that I've spoken to, it's been, you know, this time of having things a little bit go dormant has been a good time to get things cleaned up and almost kind of revitalize your energy for the next big explosion of creativity which I think is fantastic. The skies are bluer, less, less traffic on the street. So I think in that way, it has been good. But I agree with you. Um, you know, being a gallerist, it, it was tough being closed for three months. Um, yeah. but, you know, you, you make the best of it. And I come from the same school that you do. You know, I don't have an MBA, but I opened a gallery without a business plan. And Right. Kind of bootstrap myself so I know how to survive and I think that's one thing that when you're creative like you are there's always opportunity and if anybody can find it you can for sure yeah I, I think that thank you thank you for that and and I also I think that if if we're not so busy chasing something or pursuing something that we in this time I think a lot of people have become aware of what they want to do, what they set their intentions on, that they can achieve it. Not necessarily it's going to be easy, but you can get there. And that's yeah. exactly, you know, wherever I'm at today is because it wasn't easy, but I got here and likewise with you. Yeah, I agree. So on another topic, the whole protest and this whole scene that's been happening, you know, as a person of color, I'm a person of color. What was your take on that? You know, what, how, did, how did that hit you um, personally, but then also as an artist? Uh, well, personally, you know, I'm, I'm 42 and I've seen, a, first of all, knowing our history as a, as a, in, a, in this country and right. seeing the different years and the different movements that have happened. And then in my own lifetime, seeing that, you know, all the way back to like Rodney King riots and right. protest and that being on the news, you know, that it became like, oh, again, here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's watch. I'm going to watch how this is going to play out. And, and then seeing the protests and the riots and whatnot and all the variables of it, of how everybody feeds off of it, that, that my take on it is always and as an artist has been this time around, let me step back, let me observe it. Let me see how the movement is moving. Let me see the players. Let me see who's participating, who's uh, opposing it so that I can calculate the best way to help versus just being a, more noise. 
yeah. in, in, in one movement. And I look at it from a, uh, I grew up with like a military, like an Air Force father. So I grew mm -hmm. up with that mentality of, okay, you know, you, you have the movement has the people on the front and then you're going to need people who are going to be the secondary and the third tier wave coming in. You're also going to need the, you know, the quote unquote, the sniper mentality. You're going to need the, right. the office, you know, you're going to need all the departments of the military, which are effective ways for something to happen and to change, to win. So I'm looking at, well, how can I, where's my role in that? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not the 22 year old that's on the front line anymore, but right. I am somebody who let me use my knowledge to its best use. And how can that uh, help the movement? If that's my art, if that's my connections, whatever that may be on the back end. Here, let me make these phone calls, emails, introductions, and and help out where I can. That is really well put, I, and I love that picture of you know what you're talking about there because it does take a whole community of folks to not. I wouldn't even say spread awareness. I mean, at this point, if we're not aware of the fact that having a diversity of people gives us more strength. I, I don't know, you know, I mean, how far have we come? You know, right. as a Native American, um, you know, we've experienced this um, for many, many years, just up until recently when we've had gaming. So um, I think what I see is I see artists though, taking situations like yourself and then bringing it through the filter of who you are as an artist and pouring it out into whether it's this beautiful piece behind me or whether you're you're expressing it through your design and clothing or whatever it is is that you're making a statement uh you're not going to allow those things to bring you down as a human being and that lifts everybody up it lifts the youth up people are looking to someone like you as um, kind of like a forerunner, if you will. And I think that your impact on the community has been so huge. So what you're saying to me really makes a lot of sense is that you're gonna support the effort as an artist the way that you do with your creativity, which is beautiful. Right, like I, I remember being 22 and dealing with something like this. And you know, 27, you know, boom, boom. And how, and like what you're saying is something I'm very conscious of, of. If this is, you know, the concrete jungle, the urban jungle, then okay, I have my appropriate machete cutting a path through that people before me cut through and maybe it's overgrown a little bit. So, okay, I'm going to continue cutting that path so that that next generations behind me can come and pave it over, build infrastructure behind it and actually go further than I've gone once I'm done. It's, right. it's uh, you need the people to create these different paths in these different ways that it's my specialty. It might yes, be my specialty for to cut this road and it might be somebody else's specialty to cut a road up a, a whiny cliff that, but we need that so that we can actually have real infrastructure so that we can live so that we can communicate and actually build something that's long lasting and changing of what has been. And well, I think, and I and think, I think now that we're, you refocus people, you refocus them from this darkness into this light, which I've always loved about your work. Exactly. It's, it's all about the light. It's all about the balance of it. Um, understanding the dark is something that's really important because once you understand the dark, then you know where to shine your light at. And that's something that's, uh, it's great to see happening and it's happening at a rapid pace. And that's something that's great. I love it. I really do. So where can people find if they wanted to acquire your services, like if a corporation is looking right now and they want to commission you to do a large mural or people want to buy your clothing line or what's the best place for people to look for you? Uh, right now, it's through my Instagram. That's like a great portal, great social area for everybody to come together. And uh, if you know, every once in a while, I'll post a painting online saying, Oh, hey, you know, like this one behind me is a little experiment that I, I've made of like four of them. 
And I'll just post them online direct through me. And that's a great way for people to say, oh, hey, look, I want to buy that one in the DM or email. I'm updating my website right now, which will have its shop on there, which will be connected through Instagram. Right on. And I'm, I'm actually on Instagram all the time and messaging and talking to people directly. All right. Is there anything you want to show in your studio that we could get a sneak peek at? I'm actually at home right now. I moved, oh. Yeah, I moved my studio uh, on Saturday. So right now <laughs> to like another location. And so right now my studio is actually like all packed up in a big pile. Okay. Yeah, I just moved it this last Saturday. Well, that's just a good excuse to get you back on the show. Exactly. Okay, we'll do that. And I'd love to have you come back to San Diego. Uh, Jens and I were talking about how impacting this was. People are still talking about it. I get phone calls on occasion. Oh, when's your next graffiti show? I'm like, mm, yeah, we, we need to do that. So once everything, the dust settles, we definitely need to do that for sure. Right, right. I appreciate it. It was a good time down there. Good people. Yeah, it really was. Well, my friend, have a blessed day. You are impacting the world in the most profound way. Keep doing what you're doing. You're an incredible artist and an incredible person. And I appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. All right. Be well. All right. You as well. Okay. Bye. Bye.